Elizabeth Taylor was a captivating, beautiful artist who first lit up silver screens at age 17. Even at this young age, she ascribed herself as an incurable romantic. Her mother used to joke that the first thing she saw after opening her eyes was an engagement ring. Elizabeth was married eight times in her life. Many of these romances were passionate and strong, and a few of her ex-husbands remained her friend until her death. Sadly, none gave her the lifelong connection she desperately desired. Keep watching to find out the truth behind Elizabeth Taylor's eight failed marriages. Conrad Nikki Hilton Elizabeth Taylor's religious upbringing was part of the reason she believed marriage was the natural result of being in love. She searched for a lasting relationship throughout her life. Her first engagements were to football player Glenn Davis and billionaire Bill Pauley. Neither resulted in a wedding. When Elizabeth was only 18, she found the first man she felt she could spend the rest of her life with. She was married to Conrad Nikki Hilton from May 1950 to January 1951. Conrad was the son of hotel mogul Conrad Hilton Sr. He and Elizabeth met in October of 1949 at the Mocambo nightclub in LA. They were married May 6, 1950 at Beverly Hills Church of the Good Shepherd. 600 guests attended the wedding and 3,000 fans stood outside. MGM paid for her $3,500 Helen Rose dress because her film Father of the Bride was coming out soon. Conrad didn't remarry until 26 years after their divorce in 1977. Michael Wilding Elizabeth and Michael Wilding were married from February 1952 to January 1957. He was 20 years older and had also been previously divorced. Despite the age gap, the couple decided to get married. Elizabeth wore a suit with a fitted jacket, a large white collar, and a knee-length flared skirt for her second wedding. It was also designed by Helen Rose. Her engagement ring was a trendy sapphire. Elizabeth also became a mother for the first time during her marriage to Michael. The couple had two sons together, Michael Jr. and Christopher. Elizabeth's growing career made her relationship with Michael difficult, and they eventually divorced. Mike Todd Elizabeth and Mike Todd were married from February 1957 to March 1958. He was a major producer who won an Oscar for his work on Around the World in 80 Days. This third wedding was a more intimate ceremony in Acapulco. She wore a light hooded organza dress, and her engagement ring included a 29 carat diamond. Elizabeth became pregnant with her third child, a daughter, only a month after divorcing Michael Wilding. She needed another man to take care of and help her, and Mike stepped in to take on the role. He reportedly lavished her with gifts. He created a backyard display of Van Cleef and Arpels products for his jewelry-loving wife and attempted to have a meal flown in from Paris. Mike Todd tragically died in a plane crash in 1958. Elizabeth was set to travel with him but caught a cold and stayed home. This split-second decision may have saved her life. Elizabeth never fully recovered from the loss. She later said her marriage to Mike was the happiest of the eight. He was reportedly one of her three true loves, along with Richard Burton and Diamonds. Eddie Fisher Elizabeth and Eddie Fisher were married from May 1959 to March 1964. Elizabeth was devastated by Mike Todd's death and didn't attempt to find a new love for several years. In an attempt to feel better, she reached out to friend Debbie Reynolds and her husband, Eddie Fisher. Eddie was a popular singer and best man at Elizabeth's wedding to Mike Todd. When the two reconnected, they immediately noticed a physical attraction. They began an affair soon after. He divorced Debbie and married Elizabeth after finishing a run at the Tropicana. Their wedding ceremony was one of the more low-key in Elizabeth Taylor's life. It was described as a typical two-rabbi Jewish ceremony. They were married under a chuppah and celebrated by stomping a wine glass. She wore a green silk dress with a hood and sleeves. It was one of the only weddings for which Elizabeth didn't receive an engagement ring. Instead, Eddie gave her a 40-carat bracelet made with 50 diamonds. Elizabeth had high hopes for this relationship. She said her honeymoon with Eddie would last for 40 years. This proved untrue because they were divorced five years later. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Keep watching to learn about her remaining four marriages. Richard Burton Elizabeth was married to Richard Burton from March 1964 to June 1974. 
and again from October 1975 to August of 76. While still married to Eddie Fisher, she reconnected with Richard on the set of the film Cleopatra. They had met once at a party a decade before. Elizabeth claims it was love at first sight. They both noticed a strong attraction and could perhaps feel each other's passion the moment their eyes met again after so many years. They fell in love the moment they first kissed on stage. It was reportedly such a long and passionate moment, the director had to step in between them. The first wedding took place in Montreal. Her canary yellow dress was designed by Irene Sharaf. Richard proposed with a Bulgari brooch, and he famously joked that the only Italian word Elizabeth knows is Bulgari. Flowers were also part of the ceremony, with hyacinths and lilies woven into an extravagant flower crown. The couple engaged in public displays of affection often. Their love was so public and extravagant, they soon became one of the most iconic power couples of the 20th century. They were passionate lovers who often got into fights. After they'd been married for five years, Richard gave Elizabeth an Asher-cut Krupp diamond. The extravagant 33-carat piece was eventually renamed the Elizabeth Taylor Diamond, and she reportedly wore it almost every day. They also worked together a few times. They starred in a TV movie called Divorce His, Divorce Hers in 1973 and got divorced a year later. They were remarried for less than a year after that. The second ceremony was held at the Chobe River in Botswana. She wore a tie-dye dress designed by Gina Frattini. Richard wrote Elizabeth a final letter days before his death in 1984. He asked her to give their relationship one last chance. Elizabeth says they loved each other even when they couldn't live together. She also claims she loved Richard Burton her whole adult life. John Warner Elizabeth and John Warner were married from December of 1976 to November of 82. John was the first politician Elizabeth ever set her eyes on. He was the former U.S. Secretary of the Navy and became a U.S. Senator for Virginia for five terms. They met when he escorted her at a dinner for Queen Elizabeth II in Washington, D.C. The couple was on opposite sides of the political spectrum. He was a Republican and she was a Democrat. Despite their differences, they connected over shared interests, including a love of horses. The ceremony was one of the simplest and most intimate of Elizabeth's life. They were married on his farm in Virginia. She wore a violet cashmere dress, a tweed and fur coat, and a matching turban. Their relationship was not known for being tumultuous or passionate. John says he found Elizabeth fascinating and she was a great conversationalist. The pair remained friends until she died in 2011. Larry Fortensky Elizabeth and Larry Fortensky were married from October of 1991 to October of 1996. Larry had the least glamorous occupation of all of her husbands. He was a construction worker that she met going to rehab at the Betty Ford Clinic in 1988. She was attempting to overcome her addiction to prescription medication and he was working to overcome alcoholism. Larry says he knew who Elizabeth was when they met, but couldn't remember watching any of her films. He said she was funny and sweet, and there was an immediate physical attraction. The feeling was mutual, and Elizabeth married him soon after. The wedding cost almost $2 million, but her $25,000 dress was reportedly a gift from designer Valentino. They were married at Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch, and she walked down the aisle with her eldest son. The media was just as interested in this final marriage as the previous seven. Reports even state that a photographer parachuted onto the ranch in the hopes of getting a single picture of the event. And the media frenzy didn't die down once they were married. Anyone associated with Liz Taylor is bound to remain the subject of tabloids, magazine articles, and paparazzi shots for years to come. The spotlight eventually proved to be too much for Larry to handle. He treasures their memories together, but they both decided it was best to go their separate ways. Larry was another of Elizabeth's lovers who remained her friend. He received $800,000 after her death. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think any of Elizabeth's marriages could have lasted? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.